let's talk about sending autonomous flying machines to alien planets. NASA's Ingenuity helicopter on Mars has passed all initial testing with flying colors and is far exceeding the expectations of what scientists had originally thought possible. They weren't even confident the drone could operate in the thin Martian atmosphere. Now, just a few months into the trial run, Ingenuity has become an invaluable asset to the exploration of Mars. With the fast pace of advancement that we are seeing in artificial intelligence and automation right now, this really opens up a world of possibilities for what these autonomous flying machines might discover in our solar system over the decades to come. First step, Mars. Next step, Titan. This is the space race. On January 27th, the Ingenuity Mars helicopter made another leap forward, testing out its new software updates by flying up to the top of a rocky delta cliff to scout a path for Perseverance to follow. The pair of exploring robots have been on a mission to survey an ancient muddy river delta at the edge of the Jezero crater on Mars for the past several months, something NASA has been referring to as the Delta Front Campaign. And while they're just about finished with the task, the next leg of Perseverance journey is planned to take it up the river, a path that involves a climb up a steep cliff formed at the head of the old delta. Typically, Perseverance uses the Ingenuity helicopter to scout ahead for easier routes through potentially dangerous terrain, but it's not easy for the little helicopter. Ingenuity was designed to take off and land on relatively flat terrain, and while it has a suite of cameras and sensors to help it pick out safe landing sites, the Jezero crater and the delta leading out of it are extremely rough areas. So it has been difficult for technicians trying to plan safe flight paths for Ingenuity for some time now. And when Perseverance had successfully concluded the Delta Front campaign, NASA knew Ingenuity would need some help if they were going to use it to scout the Delta Top which is what they're calling the area at the top of the steep ridge that Perseverance has been studying. Up until recently, Ingenuity likely wouldn't have been able to complete this sort of flight. Its original programming used the sensors mostly to help it find safe landing sites and to avoid large obstacles. Ingenuity's normal procedure for flying was to climb to about 10 meters above the ground, then follow the flight path that the ground team had planned out for it. This is why NASA techs had to be careful when plotting the course, because Ingenuity's cameras were set to assume the ground would be relatively level where it was flying. So a sharp hill would make the sensors think that the helicopter was off balance, which would lead the programming to try to correct by veering. You can probably see how that could end badly. So if NASA had forced the bot to attempt this flight without the updates, Ingenuity would have either aborted the flight once it had sensed the cliff face, or it could have just plowed straight into it, which is where the new software updates come in. It's actually a remarkably simple idea. NASA has a huge amount of terrain data from scanning satellites like HiRISE. So what they did was basically program Ingenuity to throw out the baseline assumption of a smooth flight path and use digital elevation maps instead. Now the sensors double check the drone's position against the terrain data and problem solved. After a couple of test flights in late November 2022 were made to configure the software, Ingenuity took off for the Delta Top area for a quick reconnaissance flight on the 27th, completing its 41st flight without any problems. But while the fix for this problem is simple, we need to remember that Ingenuity wasn't intended to be operating like this, or for as long as this. Ingenuity's original mission was for only five flights. It's a tech demo designed to show that we can build something that flies in the thin Martian atmosphere. The air there is 1% as dense as ours, meaning that flying at near ground level on Mars is like trying to fly at about an altitude of 1,000 feet here on Earth. Ingenuity had to be designed in such a way as to not only fly, but fly without human input. And that's the key to why Ingenuity is such a good case study for this new era of robotic exploration. Mars is relatively close to us on a solar system scale, but a signal takes anywhere from 5 to 20 minutes to reach equipment there, depending on the positioning of our two planets. And that's not even the whole journey. 
Ingenuity couldn't fly if it had hefty communications equipment on it. So the helicopter communicates to Perseverance, which then sends the data up to the Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter, which then relays all of that to Earth. It's impossible to be able to control a drone in real time with those limitations. So NASA leans pretty heavily on automation. The flight path might be programmed by NASA techs, but the drone's automated hazard avoidance software is what keeps Ingenuity from smashing into rocks or landing in a rut or something that would make it dangerous to land or lift off from. NASA can tell Ingenuity to park in the sunlight, but it's the drone's programming that allows it to cycle the power into the battery and start up the heaters that keep it from freezing overnight without being told to. Without this strategy, we wouldn't be able to operate anything that far out, and definitely not further with any sort of regularity. And we are planning to reach out further. NASA's Dragonfly drone is set to take the lessons learned from Ingenuity and use them to attempt our first real exploration of an outer solar system body. Dragonfly is a quad propeller drone which is being designed to fly on Saturn's moon Titan. And while its launch has been delayed until 2027, Dragonfly represents the next big step in our ability to explore distant worlds. Titan is a moon with an incredibly dense atmosphere, about four times that of Earth's. It's exactly the opposite of the difficulties NASA faced with attempting to fly something on Mars. The air is so dense on Titan that flying will be like a dream by comparison. That's why NASA wants to fly around Titan rather than drive around on it, which is good because most liquid on Titan's surface is made of methane and ethane, which seems a bit dangerous to navigate while groundbound. The Dragonfly is a 1200 pound vehicle, which NASA predicts will be able to fly much longer and further than Ingenuity. 1200 pounds is the weight range of the heaviest of Martian rovers, so picture Perseverance flying from site to site and you'll get an accurate picture of what this mission will be like. But if we're having trouble controlling Ingenuity at Mars range, it'll be pretty impossible to do much with Dragonfly at Titan range. A signal from Earth would take about an hour and a half to get to Saturn's moon, and even though Dragonfly could probably house a better communication suite and still fly, it will likely need a relay satellite as well. That doesn't bode well for quick maneuvers on the surface of a world we have very little information about. So Dragonfly will undoubtedly leave the launch pad with some of the same terrain detecting software that Ingenuity is testing now. Taking advantage of the data collected by the Cassini probe and its Huygens lander back in 2005. But this won't be the only advantage Dragonfly will likely have. Recently, we covered the Rashid lunar lander, the first foray into robot exploration by the United Arab Emirates. This small rover is also testing out some new software that should take a lot of pressure off of ground teams back on Earth. Rashid is equipped with an AI. That is, Rashid has a machine learning algorithm which will help it search, identify, and catalog minerals and interesting formations. This is something that NASA scientists currently spend a lot of time on, combing through analysis to find potential survey sites. But if rovers could identify targets all on their own and gather that data without being told to, that would be a huge help. And machine learning is perfect for this sort of work. Technicians would more or less teach the algorithm to look for the same signs that scientists look for when analyzing sample data. From there, the robot will experiment until the technicians confirm that it was successful, and then off it goes. There hasn't been any confirmation that Dragonfly will have this sort of capability, but it's still in the design phase. Rashid is due to land in April, and Ingenuity is actively testing right now. It's hard to think that a 2027 launch wouldn't allow for enough time to engineer Dragonfly to use this research. And frankly, we should be thinking about more than just Dragonfly. India is sending their Chandrayaan-3 rover to the moon this year. NASA is sending both the Viper rover to scout the dark southern pole, as well as Prime-1, a Nova Sea lander made by Intuitive Machines, and all of these rovers will be testing new tech or testing new methods of surviving a planet. Procedures that will help inform on new rovers and landers in the future. There's also plenty of semi-automated equipment floating around Earth that could benefit from this type of automation. We maybe wouldn't want to let the James Webb Telescope pick its own targets, 
but what if it could use machine learning to give suggestions to its operators faster than NASA astronomers could? Over the next decade or two, we're not only going to start operating around Mars regularly, but we're going to be working in the asteroid belt, the outer solar system, investigating the Oort cloud beyond Pluto, maybe even sending some far-ranging probes to other solar systems. The work being done right now with the Ingenuity and Rashid will directly affect all of those efforts by giving us chances to test different types of automation much closer to home. Meet us back here every week for more updates on everything aerospace industry and interstellar exploration related. Make sure to give the video a thumbs up today if you liked it. That really helps us out for real. And subscribe to the Space Race for more videos just like this. We do one long form essay and one news update every week. And if you'd like more, we've got two more on the screen for you right now.